Hey guys, it's time to weather this locomotive up. This is going to be a how I do it video. So uh, even though I've done a couple of these in the past, I've had a lot of comments saying, hey, we want to see how you weather this guy up. So I'll go through my process here and uh, what I've selected to use. Now, first off, taking a look at this picture or taking a look at the uh, pictures of this locomotive, the uh, prototype there, it's, uh, you know, it, it's got a little bit of grime and stuff on it, depending on what year picture you look at. So um, also taking into account that I just love to, you know, really heavily weather and rust up my uh, my rolling stock and my locomotives and stuff like that. But we're going to try to keep it you know, somewhat subdued on this guy because I'm going to try to kind of run him in the, I guess, late 80s era, mid to late 80s, you know, somewhere around there. So we don't want to rust him out completely, at least not yet. Now. The normal sort of process that I use, I use my airbrush and I end up kind of just spraying the bottom of the uh, locomotive around the trucks and the fuel tank and, you know, getting a little bit of uh, sort of that grimy, uh, you know, muddy, dusty sort of kick up that uh, tends to accumulate on a locomotive. And uh, normally what I use is a mixture of Tamiya paint, um, black, brown and just a drop of red in there is my kind of standard go-to uh, sort of semi-dusty rusty sort of uh, you know coat that I'm gonna do but uh, for this time around I'm gonna use some new uh, stuff that I picked up um, we've got some Vallejo model air here and I've selected a couple of colors right here this is armor brown and it uh, Kind of looks like it's already got a little bit of red in there. There's a green brown here that looks like it's a little bit more uh, on the gray, dark gray side. A little sand yellow. And uh, we've got the uh, stand we got another one over here that's, it says brown RLM. So I think this is the uh, sort of the primer that uh, um, would be used on uh, like armor models and stuff like that. But uh, just in case we want a little bit of extra red in that mix. And then I'm going to go to my two standbys right here. We got uh, MIG, Ammo by MIG, uh, Streaking Effect. Uh, this is kind of like uh, a brownish color. I use that to make like the streaks and the rust spots for the, uh, you know, near the battery compartment. And then another enamel wash here, light rust wash. Um, these two have almost are almost done here, so I've got to pick some more up right there. And then, We'll finish up with another Vallejo product here, just a model wash here. Um, it's a European dust. It's just like a dirt um, water-based uh, and quite muddy, almost like uh, almost taking like a, a light brown and uh, diluting it and kind of washing the model with it. And finally, we'll end up using these two uh, pigments these are powders and uh, you can see the colors there there's a dark yellow ochre and brown iron oxide and I use those to uh, kind of do a little bit of rusting effects kind of on the uh, the top of the cab and stuff like that so let me get set up here we'll get the airbrush fired up and uh, I'll show you how I uh, kind of do that all right so first off is our armor uh, brown right here which I, I tried to thin out with a couple of different things but uh, I know you're not supposed to thin these they're made to spray uh, directly but uh, when I try to thin them kind of odd it almost turns like a greenish blue and you can see my little tray right here I've kind of tried to uh, see different uh, thinners here acrylic thinners uh, here's water um, and even with the water it still kind of came out looking a little bluish so um, I'm just putting it straight in and uh, as you can see if I spray it straight kind of comes out looking uh, black or at least like a dark brown so that's I think I'm just gonna go with it straight like this and uh, see so make sure you get you yeah, on the camera there we'll just start kind of dusting up the the bottom of it right here with a little bit and of course you're going to have to uh, excuse the uh, compressor going on there.
All right, so we got the we got the first coat on there. It's an interesting uh, little color there, especially when it hits the uh, the blue or the black of the uh, fuel tank. Kind of gives it a little bit of a reddish hue, actually. And I made sure to get uh, sort of the back side and the front side uh, plow right there, and uh, a little bit on the front steps right there. Not a whole hell of a lot, or sorry, excuse my French, but not a ton right here. Especially on top. I'm basically staying at the very bottom of the uh, locomotive here. So next up I'm gonna give uh, Gonna give this green brown a try and let's see what that one does All right guys, we're not gonna use this green brown right here because after I uh, put it in the airbrush and tried kind of spraying it out a little bit It came out looking pretty green. So Yeah, I'm not sure those colors are Pretty much what I want for this thing. So I'm gonna go to my old standby here, which is my Tamiya black and brown and maybe we'll put a dab of uh, uh, Dab of red in there, so I'm gonna mix those up in my uh, airbrush and then we'll get to spraying again All right guys, so I've mixed it up here, and I'm, I'm using uh, X20A thinner from Tamiya there and you can see I've got it uh, Pretty heavily diluted in there. It's about, uh, oh, I'm gonna say like, I'm gonna say like 70% thinner, and then uh, just a few drops inside of there. And as you can see right here, if you kind of just it took a little bit out on my toothpick, you can see how watered down it is. And even if we start spraying it here, it gives me that brownish color that I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Um, and we'll spray her away here. And again, this is really just to kind of darken up the uh, the trucks here. And the fuel tank. We'll get the uh, first pass here on the uh, the front of the train. Get the other side here. All right, let me shut that off just for a second. So you can see I had a glob <laughs> come spraying out when I was doing that uh, that back end right there. And uh, luckily it wasn't anywhere on the body, but we got a few sprinkles or spots here and there. Hey, happy little accident. That's just the way it works right there. I think I might have shaken uh, this thing or dumped a little bit out right here. But hey, that's part of the uh, that's part of the process here. I think we've got the trucks at least uh, subdued there a little bit and uh, the fuel tank a little bit of dirt out on front right there and definitely got the start of our uh, 
Well, we got that truck definitely subdued right there. Must have been an oil leak, huh? All right. I think that's pretty good for the first coat here. I think I'm going to let that dry, and then uh, we'll get to doing a little bit uh, with the uh, the streaking and the rusting effects. All right, next up, a little bit of rust effects there. And I've been looking at a few pictures here. I'll try to get the glare off of there. Here's a picture, not the same locomotive number, but uh, you can see where the uh, rust stains are right there at my thumb, sort of underneath the, I think that's the battery box right there. Uh, you can see the roof over here is pretty good and rusted up on this one. I uh, will take care of that. And even the little sunshade right there has got some nice uh, rust effects on it. So we're going to give that a try. All right, so we're going to be using my uh, enamel wash here, Ammo by MIG, uh, light rust wash. And you can see this one's pretty, ugh. so I'm going to put it into my little tray right here. It's a few drops is all you need. And uh, we'll see if we can get a little bit of rust effects going down on that battery box right there. And I'm being very uh, sparing with this stuff because a little bit goes a long way. But I uh, just want to get a little bit of... A little bit of rust effects over here on the bottom. Again, it's in an enamel, so... Uh, you kind of try to brush it down a little bit. You end up brushing a lot of it away. And the nice thing about the enamel is you got a little bit of time to work here with it, too. There we go. Just on the one side. And what the heck, we'll put a few drops right here on the corner of the uh, the sun visor right here. We'll come back with a little bit of powders and, uh, and maybe a little bit more color, a little bit more paint. Let's get the other side over here too because we don't want them to feel left out right here. And like I said, my, uh, my jar here is pretty... Uh, pretty old so it tends to kind of congeal and stuff like that but uh, yeah, just a little bit right there like that there we go hopefully you can see that on the camera right there but uh, we'll take a closer look once I get everything done and what the heck we'll put a little bit up here just little dabs like this just to indicate just a few little rusty spots like that I don't think I'm going to rust up anything else on here. I want to try to keep it uh, fairly clean. Like I said, just a little bit of rust on the uh, sun sun visors there and over on the battery compartment here. They kind of went overboard right here. But as you can see, you can kind of start pulling off some of the other uh, um, spray-on stuff, the enamel. you got to be careful there because as soon as you start start wiping we're gonna start wiping other effects off but hey happy little mistake right there all right next up is probably my favorite part which is using the Vallejo pigments here and here's where we're gonna go a little bit crazy on uh, on our fuel tanks and maybe a little bit up on the roof there. Let me find a decent brush here. Here we go. Here's my favorite uh, brush for doing this stuff and you can see it's uh, it's pretty tattered, pretty stiff, uh, and that's kind of what you want. Now this stuff is a powder, so uh, usually just dab a little bit on there, get most of it off on my little uh, tray. I've got a little tray right here. And uh, get most of it off right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little bit right there. Just kind of work it around on the top of the hood right here, or uh, the hood, the top of the cabin right there. And hopefully you can see that. Probably not, but I know that's kind of washing out right there. Let me get that set back up for you. Uh, you will see this once we uh, once I get the camera a little bit better set up right there, and 
Again, I want to kind of let that stuff dry right there because you can see I'm sort of wiping it off. And we'll get a we'll get a good amount here on the uh, on the fuel tank. Let's go ahead and get the other side too. And I kind of wipe off most of it. You know, you can see I'm not painting the whole thing. I'm just kind of touching it in a few spots and then wiping it up and down. We'll go over here and get this sunshade too. And the top of the roof. Really just rubbing it in. Now, um, I told you before that I put my my uh, flat coat on and that uh, that helps to give it a sort of a rough texture up on uh, on the body right um, helps things like powders and stuff like that really uh, adhere to the uh, to the surface instead of if you just had the straight plastic most of the powder would just come off right same thing on like the fuel tank area all right, next up, now you really got to go sparingly. This is the light uh, pigment, and uh, I don't, you can kind of see what it looks like, and it's going all over the place here. This one, since it's light, and we're going to be going kind of on a dark fuel tank right there, you got to really go sparingly here. And you can see what it looks like, just touching a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. It should look a little bit uh, subdued on the uh, on the yellow because that's basically what it is. It's almost like a yellow yellow orange. Okay, I'm going to stay away from my rusty uh, enamel right there. Let's go ahead and get the other side right here. Ooh. Now you can uh, you can keep going for quite a bit doing stuff like this. And you don't have to do it all in one shot, right? Uh, you can always come back and add more stuff in. Now uh, I don't actually seal the model after the fact. Um, I kind of just leave it as is. Um, you know, you tend not to handle it as much. Um, once it's all set, and uh, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not going to put another coat of, uh, you know, clear coat on it, meaning a flat clear coat, um, to seal it in. I'm just going to leave it as it is, and it's just going to wear as it's uh, as it's sitting on the layout. And I think that's about as far as I'm going to go here. The only other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get some. Uh, I actually have a little uh, black chalk, and what we're going to do is uh, get up on the top right there and weather up the uh, the exhaust. So let me get that ready to go. All right, so he'll be, here will be the final touch. And uh, if you can take a look right here. Now these are just pastels um, that I use, a little pastel stick. I just kind of scraped a bit on here. There's some gray and white, or not white, sorry, black. <laughs> and I'm gonna use mostly the black right here, same brush. And I'm going to try not to grab it where I was screwing around with stuff, but I'm going to get a good amount all over the exhaust right here. Just work it into the, uh, the flat clear coat right there. Dirty that all up. I'm going to blow it off a little bit. All right, let's see if you can see that. You can see, there we go. Now we're looking uh, looking like that engine's been running a little bit. Alrighty, and then there you can see on the roof, I'm trying to get it, uh, get the better lighting for you right there. And you can see there's our effects on the, uh, the top of the cab right there and the sunshade. And 
a little bit of rust down there on the batteries and we have got well I almost forgot we got one more thing to do I always like to get the uh, plows right there and what I'm going to use is my uh, my two weathering powders that I had before here so let's go ahead and just get the crap out of them hit them all up and I try to get the uh, the coupler too a little bit hopefully you can see that right there and then we'll get the back side same thing and again I don't uh, get a little bit of the black over here too why not I'm not gonna seal this up because I'm just gonna let it kind of settle in and then uh, whew, as I knock everything over settle in and uh, you know over time some of it will come off hopefully that comes in uh, in view right there Trying to keep it in focus. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. All right. Uh, and no, I'm not grabbing the hood right here. By the way, somebody mentioned about uh, don't pick your locomotive up like this. Let me tell you, on this thing, <laughs> this thing is solid. It's not uh, rinky-dinky here. This, this, the, the actual um, top hatch, whatever you want to call it, axis, that little hatch right there is uh, pretty sturdy on this... Uh, on this unit all right I think that's it for now that's my basic weathering right here and uh, like I said I, I will probably come back and just do some more touch-ups here and there but uh, let's let's put it out on a layout and see what it looks like all right guys there she is I got a little extra light on the layout here so you can uh, get a better look and hopefully our wheels aren't too dirty with all that crap we just sprayed all on them. I might have to do a little wheel cleaning there. But so far looking good. Looking like it's been uh, running around the rails here a little bit. Let's come over here and get a closer look. If I can keep the camera steady. You can see it's got that uh, little grimy effect there towards the bottom. Looking pretty nice. Looks like it's starting to fit into my, uh, my layout here. As long as we get a current keeper in it. I'm going to pop her around. You can see the other side too. And of course, no current keeper. You lift it up and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shut down on you. So we'll get her fired up here again. Let's get a good position here for the camera. Oh my goodness sakes. current keeper in there well and we also sprayed a lot of stuff on it so I do have to clean the uh, wheels so I can't fully blame the uh, the lack of uh, current keeper on it because the track is clean but uh, probably got a lot of grime and stuff like that on the uh, on the wheels so what I'll do is just do the standard cleaning find it uh, informative a little bit maybe helpful give you a few ideas right there I'm gonna go ahead and shut down right here 
Guys, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, hit the like button, all that good stuff. You know what to do. Helps the videos here. So there we go. There's our uh, start of weathering on our new uh, SD40-2. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, like I said, go slow if you're just starting out. Uh, just try one little thing and then another and then, uh, you know, take it easy and uh, don't be afraid to screw up because you can always repaint it. What can you say? All right, guys. Till next time. Take care. Ah.